So welcome to part four of this online uh, Radcliffe Cardiology program. Uh, I'm going to hand back to Professor Leslie Cavi to talk about the non-pharmacological management of POTS. So really, the non-pharmacological management is the cornerstone of management of POTS. So we're looking at increased fluids um, for most patients, an increase in salt, um, exercise, sometimes dietary manip manipulation and um, support, psychological support can be necessary. So regarding fluids, um, we've already discussed that patients um, are often hypovolemic. Um, this is a relative hypovolemia in that their vasculature is probably too large for the volume of blood that they have. Um, it's important to take a detailed fluid history from the patients because they very often underestimate the amount of um, fluids that they're taking. And we would usually recommend that they drink two to three litres um, of fluid per day in an adult. Um, it can be helpful to advise them to drink from sports bottles or, or there are actually some quite nifty little apps available um, that can help them to monitor their, their fluid intake. It's Sometimes people can be a little over-enthusiastic with um, fluids and, and water intoxication and hyponatremia are dangers and adults could potentially drink 24 litres of fluid in a day if they didn't sleep. Unfortunately, their um, renal system can only handle about one litre per hour and obviously less in children. Um, and so it's important to give yourself a little bit of a boost in the morning and um, to try and space out the, the fluid drinking throughout the day. With children, we usually recommend because of their different um, sizes and weights that uh, they should um, drink until their urine is a pale straw colour. Water, rapid water drinking, um, if somebody starts to become symptomatic, involves drinking two glasses of water in quick succession. And that can actually raise your blood pressure and reduce your heart rate um, within a few minutes before the, the fluids actually enter the vasculature. Um, and that's thought to be possibly due to a, a sympathetic reflex related to the stretching of the stomach. Um, regarding salt, we normally recommend that patients have about um, an extra, an additional six grams of salt per day, which is one level teaspoon or eight slow sodium tablets. And obviously you have to take care in patients who have coexisting renal disease and cardiac disease and also in children. And um, in children, we would normally recommend 0 0.12 grams of salt per kilogram per day in two divided doses. Regarding diet, there's not a lot of evidence um, behind this, but people who manage patients regularly often find um, that dietary manipulation can help their symptoms um, quite dramatically. Obviously, um, patients will often be having a high salt diet, but we find that patients tend to do better if they eat little and often, maybe even having five or six small meals a day. And they would normally try to avoid um, heavy meals with refined carbohydrates. Some of the um, patients with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome and gut dysmotility tend to find that the FODMAP diet is helpful and in mast cell activation, um, a low histamine diet seems to help some. Regarding exercise, it's important to pace activities and start very often at a really low level and warn patients that it can take weeks or even months for them to improve and that they might actually feel worse. And we would, in the early on, um, we would recommend um, horizontal exercise, such as Pilates, um, swimming, recumbent exercise, biking and rowing, and then sort of graduating on to more upright exercise, um, such as brisk walking. Um, other self-management techniques include um, positional um, manoeuvres to help to prevent fainting, such as um, folding your arms or crossing your legs, squeezing buttocks. Um, some patients find that support tights are very helpful and in um, particularly younger women and men, they tend to find that the compression sports clothing is more acceptable for them. Um, if clinicians want to um, give further advice to their patients, it might be helpful to uh, refer them to the POTS UK website where there are several pages that help patients um, to learn a lot more about self-management techniques. And then finally, um, psychological support. Um, you know, 
patients do experience very frightening symptoms like palpitations, um, chest pain, syncope. Um, they may have to adjust from being very fit and well to suddenly becoming quite unwell with a long-term um, disability. And some do have um, psychological comorbidities, um, such as um, non-hemodynamic or psychogenic syncope, um, anxiety, depression, and suggesting that they should have psychological support when they've spent seven years being told that it's all in their head can be um, quite challenging. And so it's really important to explain the rationale behind explain, uh, why you think psychological support might be helpful. And finally, um, we did a survey last year of patients and asked them what their healthcare priorities would be. And two themes came across um, way more than any of the other themes. And one was that patients really wanted access to a knowledgeable specialist. And secondly, in the words of one of the patients, they wanted access to a healthcare professional who listens, really listens. So on that note, I'll hand back to Andrew again. Thanks, Leslie. I think that's a message that rings through uh, all the diseases that we see. You know, if you have a chronic disease, particularly one as complex as this, uh, mm -hmm. having a doctor who really tries to listen, tries to help. And uh, th there's a broad range of interventions that um, we've got support stockings. I've often worried that they can be wrongly fitted and could actually make things worse. Uh, I often see them half rolled down and gripping the mid calf. And I worry that it's going to actually uh, cause harm rather than help. Uh, so do you recommend, Leslie, that they get them professionally fitted or just to wear standard sportswear that give an even level of compression? Uh, what, what's your advice to patients? Well, the first thing I usually tell them is to try just over-the-counter sport uh, sort of um, compression tights, waist high, which is what we would normally recommend. And if they can't tolerate them, they're not going to tell, tolerate any prescription um, compression wear. Um, if they do tolerate that, then um, it is available on NHS prescription from the GPs. Um, it, it is ideal to get patients measured and patients can actually measure themselves. And on the POTS UK website, there is a page about compression and it tells patients how to measure them themselves and um, it tells the GPs how to prescribe them because it's actually quite challenging to do that appropriately on the systems that we have at work. Yes, it is very difficult. I've tried it before. Um, so Mel, an extra six grams of salt a day. I saw you coming out in hives there at the thought of it. Uh, <laughs> as the director of uh, Bart's Blood Pressure Clinic, we spend all our time telling patients that salt is evil. I've actually found it quite difficult to unwind some of that advice in patients who have this pattern uh, of symptoms consistent with POTS. Uh, if they're 50, 60 years old, they keep being told to reduce their salt. And I do wonder sometimes if that's why they present at that phase of life. Uh, what is your advice on, on salt in, in this group? I mean, the advice has to follow that, uh, which is uh, given across the consensus uh, statements, which is to supplement salt to the tune, actually, of a uh, total salt intake of 10 to 12 grams in a day, which is, in the hypertension clinic, we want people to consume less than four grams a day. But this is a population who generally are either hypotensive or who have uh, normal blood pressure with significant orthostatic intolerance. And the group that you're referring to are much less common. And in fact, if you're talking about folks who are getting into their 50s and 60s who have uh, POTS-like symptoms, quite often the blood pressure is more of a challenge. And then um, you can't use um, salt intake, but you might use compression hosiery to support hypotension and then use other drugs to take the edge off very high blood pressure surges. It gets a little bit challenging at that stage. And patients don't really think in terms of grams of salt because salt is in so many foods. Can you just give us some idea what it would take to raise one's diet by six grams of salt? Yeah, what we say is uh, to, to get sort of two teaspoonfuls of salt and measure them out maybe into a small um, bag so that you're continuously able to add to your food preparation during the day from that bag. You know you've increased, uh, therefore, by a fixed amount on a daily basis. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Nick, uh, again, w when we look across this spectrum of non-pharmacological interventions, these aren't particularly sexy parts of medicine. This is just getting simple things right that can make a big difference for the patient. Sometimes they're more successful than drugs. Yes. 
Yes, absolutely. And, and it's, uh, I think it's very important to get over that message uh, that this is a multidisciplinary, multi-systemic approach um, and that perhaps each, each of these different aspects uh, may provide each patient with something slightly different. Some people benefit from the fluid, some people don't benefit from the salt. Um, so it, it's essentially providing them with a menu of these are the things that may make a difference, but that if you're not doing them perhaps to the extent that we would like, then you may not get anything out of it. So it, I mean, we routinely measure salt sodium excretion um, on 24-hour urine collections to get patients into the right um, uh, areas. So it, it, it's, it's about providing them with an understanding of why we're suggesting what we're suggesting and then saying, you know, go away and see how you get on. And do you recommend layering of these interventions or do you take away the ones if they haven't worked? So maybe you try stockings, they make no difference. Do you then tell them to keep going and add more stockings and then, uh, or, or do you do them one at a time? Um, so I suppose from, a, um, from the non-medication perspective, we generally just suggest these are the sorts of things that are going to make a difference. So go away and try all of them. Mm. Um, but, but certainly, you know, if, if there's a group of patients who don't benefit from using compression clothing, fine. But that probably tells us something about their pathophysiology, but we're not going to insist that they carry on, on using that. So it's try all of these techniques. If they work, great. If they don't work, move on to the next thing. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, on that note, we're going to move on to the next section. So thanks very much.